Hello my loves and a very chilling welcome back to the library is haunted so I hope you brought your creepy library cards my darlings. How are we all? We're well and truly into October now and thus the first wrap up of my um, Halloween specific TBR in which I read all kind of horror scary seasonal um books you know relating to um all hallows eve and such which is a bit of a departure for me it's not a normal thing for me to do but it is something that you kind of asked for and i have to say so far i'm really enjoying it it's having a nice cup of tea um because the temperature has significantly dropped here in the uk and um given oh there's no lights on that's better. Um, and given everything that's going on financially at the moment, I'll be honest, I'm scared to put the heating on. So there we go. Um, that's a discussion for another time, perhaps. Uh, but if you did miss my introduction to the Halloween TBR, I will link that in the description down below, as I link most things uh, that I mention. Um, and you'll kind of see the categories that I've set up for myself going week by week. So one category every week and then the following week I'll wrap it up so this week is the oh actually before I, I I get into that I would like to just take a moment to mark the passing of um Hilary Mantel the author or could be Mantel I'm not sure isn't it funny with some words and names and stuff you've never actually heard them spoken so you kind of have to rely on how you've read them um but I actually quite like that in some ways I can't remember who said it once but that it's quite a famous quote that said don't be embarrassed if you mispronounce things it just means that you've never heard them it means you've read them in a book which is nothing to be ashamed of i did that i remember when i was recording my um my voice reel when i was at drama school um and uh one of the light words i had to say was camu as in the philosopher um but i'd only ever read it i'd never heard anyone talk about it so i pronounced it camus and um, the recorder very nicely kind of laughed a little bit. They weren't being horrible or anything like that. But I just said, oh, I've only ever read the name in a book. So just straighten that a little bit. Um, I've only ever read the name in a book, so that's why. But anyway, this week's theme was, or rather last week's theme that I'm recapping now, was um, the modern vampire or the contemporary vampire. So sort of... Um, nowadays depictions of vampirism in novels um, and um, I chose to read Fledgling by Octavia E. Butler which was her final book which I read on the Kindle um, or you know um, ebook app whatever yours is and also uh, The Book Eaters by Sunny Dean which um, I featured on the channel before. Um, what I'm going to do as well each week is because normally we have we do it at book club we have like book sniffs out of five as in how many did you give this book but for this one I'm going to go uh, scary sniffs out of five um, but that won't necessarily be um, whether I thought it was good bad or indifferent that will more be about how horror-y I guess, or how scary the actual content is. Um, I hope that makes sense. I'm sure it will in due course. Anyway, so, <clears throat> yeah, vampirism has always kind of um, intrigued me, not only as a kind of folklore, myth, legend thing in in everyday life, but also in terms of depictions. There's some um, in media, books, TV, so on and so forth. It's probably my favourite kind of supernatural creature thing now I come to think of it I've never realized that before but it probably is my favorite kind of supernatural entity thing because I think it's probably one of the most believable which is not said no actually I mean I suppose werewolves and um Frankenstein's monster and stuff like that are, are also kind of believable technologically sociologically speaking but for me vampirism kind of really captures particularly for those of us living in like, I guess, the West, uh, whatever that means, um, the kind of culture of consumerism. So the, the nature of the vampire is to consume life for itself, which in some ways, it, it's quite easy to map that onto consumer culture, isn't it? Just generally, not to labour it like this is a thesis, but I do find that very, very interesting. There's also something about the kind of life force that passes between, like, the human victim quote-unquote and the vampire that i find intriguing and of course 
my um, my favourite show of all time in terms of storytelling and well pretty much everything is Buffy the Vampire Slayer so I suppose that makes sense and then obviously it's, you've got stuff like The Lost Boys which I think is a masterpiece and um, you know Anne Rice interviewed with the vampire, Vampire Lestat, so on, um, Queen of the Damned so on and so forth which is also very interesting so what I quite like about the vampire trope is that each kind of generation makes it anew um, for their purposes. So obviously with Twilight, spoiler, not my favourite franchise, not particularly something I'm interested in. No diss, but it's not for me. Um, they had the whole thing with the sparkles and so on and so forth. Whereas, um, you know, other franchises have literally gone, Buffy in particular, is is, is that vampires are intrinsically evil and and um you know dedicated to uh carnage unless they can be resold because the idea is they have no soul isn't it interestingly enough i remember reading a book on my ma i did my masters in um gender sexuality and popular culture um at the university of manchester and um one of the modules i did looked at kind of depictions in victorian fiction of the supernatural um and one of the books we read was uh carmilla uh which is kind of novella that deals with vampirism but also lesbianism as well at the same time um thinly veiled and kind of wrapped into each other uh which is interesting because a lot of the times these kind of supernatural tropes were the way that authors got away with you know looking at issues that maybe weren't quote unquote palatable to the reading public like they wouldn't have got away with it in in like everyday contemporary fiction but when you introduce the element of the supernatural or the fantastical they could kind of sneak it in there through the back door anyway all that is to say that um both of these books dealt kind of with the with the the vibe of vampirism albeit in very different ways so fledgling i thought was beautiful actually and and i was a little apprehensive going in i'm going to be honest because sci-fi um is not my you know go-to we have read sci-fi for the book club and i have enjoyed some sci-fi before but it's not my kind of go-to and octavia butler is is kind of I, I guess you could kind of put her in the sci-fi speculative horror genre uh, i have a lot of respect for it but i haven't read from her before so i was a little apprehensive but fledgling um as i say her last book really felt like from what i've read around her 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 bringing all the elements of her work throughout her career into into that so what we have is shori who we meet at the start of the book when she's a, a young apparently girl um who awakens in the woods bruised and battered and with no memory of who she is or how she got there she doesn't even know her name um she then picks up this guy who's driving past on the road or rather he picks her up and they form a kind of relationship and we discover later as she begins to get her memories back that she is a vampire of sorts although in the book they're called the Ina um I-N-A it could be Ina but I read it as Ina um and uh, yeah, so although she looks 11, 12, which is, it's, it's interesting um, that because I've read some reviews of it that were like, um, you know, querying that because she has a sexual relationship with the guy and later other people as well. But she is actually 53, even though she looks 11 or 12. Um, and that made for an interesting conversation. Just just warning you of that if you read it. Some people might find that depiction, um, you know, a little bit. It's a content warning. It's just it's just a warning for that. Um, so and the what we discover as we go along is that something has happened to her family. Um, and she has to kind of learn again all about herself and who's trying to kill her um, and wipe out her family line. Because it turns out that and this is quite early on revealed that Shuri's a kind of experiment. So she has darker skin to begin with. Um, so she's black, essentially black presenting which gives her an advantage over other members of the species who are pe predominantly pale skinned um, because they can't go out in the sunshine. They, they can't function in sunlight, whereas she can. Um, but her family have been kind of playing around with um, genetics and coding and so on and so forth, which it, it raises some interesting questions in and of itself about um, engineering, eugenics, so on and so forth. Um which is in itself kind of tied to the vampire 
legend in a manner of speaking. You know what I mean? There's something about... Uh, in Buffy, they call it siring. So people um, who are made into vampires by drinking the blood of a vampire who's bitten them. This doesn't happen in this book. What they eventually... What they actually become is symbionts. So they... Um, humans who choose to live with the vampires who are not evil or good they just are people um and um they they kind of have to coexist together once the person's been bitten um they need the vampire as much as the vampire needs them to survive so it's really really interesting and it kind of touches albeit briefly on loads of like kind of like mythological stuff around the vampire but actually the main drama of the book is more human and the horror is more about what we as people do to each other through fear, misunderstanding, hatred, so on and so forth. So, I mean, these are like prime, from what I've read, issues that Octavia Butler was dealing with a lot. And actually, it's quite, would I say it was explicit? In some respects, yes, but in others, no, really. It's not overtly violent, sexual or anything like that. I mean, I do think some of the content is probably... It's an adult read, obviously. But, you know, I wouldn't say it was out-and-out out sort of gore. But then again, that's the thing with horror, isn't it? I was just thinking about... Um, um, you know, that horror is, is a really hard genre to pin down. Because what is horror for one person is not going to be horror for another person so it really is i suppose in some ways the genre kind of sits in this weird liminal space doesn't it where you have to just decide what it is because this book could have been several i really enjoyed it i thought it was really really interesting i loved the touches of uh the musings i should say on race on sexuality on family on uh the nature of being different even when you're already othered so different within difference if that makes sense at all uh, but in terms of actual horror for me scare factor i would probably give it two two scary sniffs Ooh, that's a scary sniff by the way so i should have done two there shouldn't i so ooh, ooh, that's two scary sniffs but i would absolutely recommend it other than that although it doesn't read particularly halloween-ish just as a precursor um, similarly, I actually think uh, Sonia Dean's The Book Eaters, the premise of which is that they are um, there are a race of people called book eaters. They go by other names as well, who survive from eating books. So they can't write or anything, but they can absorb vast amounts of knowledge by eating books. And they live in these manors ruled over by patriarchs. And the women are essentially married out twice in their lives until they become unable to conceive children again. And there's like a shortage of female book eaters and so on and so forth. Um, and then some of them are um, give birth to um, uh, what they call mind eaters, which are they, they don't eat books. What they actually do is eat the memories of other people to survive and then take on the personality traits of the people around them. And um, our kind of introduction to this world is is in the form of looking at kind of vampirism in in it, through a slightly different lens whereby the book eaters themselves are essentially consuming knowledge although they're physical books although you could sort of uh, you could probably make an argument for that being um, an eating of culture or knowledge intelligence whatever and then of course you've got the literal mind eaters who do eat minds and you know it's kind of been well established in the um in the kind of culture that they live very separately from the rest of humanity and um that the mind eaters have to be i'm trying to really not give you any spoilers here because i will spoil it if i if i go into more than the mythology um the mind eaters are sort of disciplined using a drug called redemption which quells their hunger and then they can just eat books but it doesn't work for everyone and now there's like a scarcity of it so our protagonist again no spoilers um her one of her children um is a mind eater and she's just trying to 
help him survive before he's kidnapped and sent off to be trained as what they call dragons over there who are they're essentially grunt soldiers for the book eaters um but also not be absorbed by eating the minds of other people. This is a really interesting book, actually, in terms of not only of the premise, which I do think has a lot in common with vampirism, but also in terms of how visceral it is in places, even though it reads very much like a fairy tale. A fairy tale this ain't. Or if it is, it's definitely a Grimm's fairy tale. Um, some of the stuff around the, the process of mind eating and the kind of associated horrors with that is really quite scary in places in the sense that it's not intending to be overly you know it's not intended to be overly violent but the imagery of it is really really quite visceral and evocative um yeah and and, and it's a kind of dual timeline as well so we go back and forth to see the kind of before and after um our protagonist escapes from the clutches of the family and then some of the scenes where she has to procure um, food for her um, child are are quite breathtaking. And you know, there's there's some real horror there. I think, which in some ways makes it scarier than fledgling because you don't see a lot at first, but then you gradually do, and then it becomes more about what you imagine. Which is, you know, that's the reading experience anyway, isn't it? But um, but yeah, so if I was going to give this one some scary sniffs, and it is very, very good, by the way. It took me quite a while to read it because I took it quite slowly because I wanted to sort of absorb and understand like the nuances of the plot. Because um, in other ways, it actually almost reads like contemporary fiction as well as like fantasy. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily bang it right into horror. Maybe there's a little subsection between like horror, which could be body horror, and fantasy. I would maybe stick it there, but the characters are really well drawn and morally it's, I find it fascinating, actually, in point of fact. I think it has a lot to say, actually, about our society generally, albeit at a slight angle. Um, and just for those kind of body horror gore scenes, I'm going to give it three and a half scary sniffs. So, oh, <laughs> I've got that wrong. <laughs> That was the half there. So three and a half scary sniffs. So there we go. If you fancy anything there, a new spin on the vampire legend, do do check these out. So that's what I read for the first week. And what a great first week it's been. Uh, next week, oh, well, I've already started, actually. Spoiler. But you'll be getting the recap next week is the, what I'm calling the thriller. So half thriller, half horror book. And I'll be reading the big chunkster Nosfora 2 by uh joe hill i'm about 200 pages in at the moment and uh really don't know where it's gonna go so uh but no spoilers for next week you'll have to tune in for that in the meantime put your creepy library cards somewhere safe my loves and um you all take care of yourselves uh don't read with the lights off or anything like that and um, i will see you in the next episode of this little mini series the library is haunted until then beware of things that go bump in the night Mwah.